Hey guys, Ash here. Now, Lenovo is not a brand we've been seeing much of recently. I mean, barring the occasional mid-ranger, Lenovo has been largely silent, content to be behind the scenes for a slew of underwhelming launches under the Motorola branding. Now, yes, Motorola's flagships have been priced ridiculously, but here's the Lenovo Legion Duel. A phone priced lower than the ROG Phone 3 with a spec sheet that's quite similar. And in some areas, the Legion Duel even goes a step above the ROG. So is this something special from Lenovo? Or is it just another ROG lookalike that's masquerading as an alternative? Let's first unbox the phone. At first glance, the packaging seems to be nothing special. Yeah, the text is reflective, but hey, we've seen that a lot in the past. Now, slide it open and that it's followed by that and then this. Here's the thing, Lenovo has a battery and a speaker in the box, so it does this when you flip it open. I think we are in for something special here. Getting rid of the protective plastic now. Oops, I got the phone booting and hot damn, look at this pack. It seems like a Black Shark and ROG phone combo with red accents. Anyway, let's set the phone aside and see what's on the inside. Stylish outside, savage inside, that is what they're going for. We have a USB Type-C cable, followed by another USB Type-C cable, then the charger. The stylish on the outside, savage inside box has a SIM tool, a Type-C to headphone jack adapter. We also have some documentation and a transparent hard case, very, very reminiscent of the ROG. Now that's not all that's reminiscent of the ROG. The prominent lines, the LED to the back, the bezels to the top and bottom, the in-hand feel. If we were to talk numbers, they weigh just about the same. Dimensions are pretty identical to the same resolution, the same display technology, similar RAM options, the same damn flagship chip. Hell, they both even sport pressure sensitive triggers, ultrasonic, and they were also announced the same day. Now, yes, it's a crazy amount of similarities, but there are a few marked differences, areas where Lenovo surprisingly has an edge. You didn't expect that, did you? I didn't. First, the display. The Lenovo Legion Duel sports a slightly larger 6.65 inch panel. Despite that, Lenovo still managed to keep the lens slightly lesser. How? They've moved the selfie camera from the top. Where to? Let's get to that in a second. The display here is also AMOLED. It's 144Hz, so super fluid. They do let you choose between 60, 90, 120 or 144 hertz, just like ROG. This is a pretty panel and the Legion Duel is excellent to game on, just like the ROG phones. And talking about the ROG phones, here again we get stereo front firing speakers and they sound great, pretty loud. Here, check this out. That's the Lenovo, switching to the iPhone 12 Pro, which has a competent set of cans built in. Again, Lenovo. Apple. Given this is AMOLED, the fingerprint scanner, it's present under the display, it's pretty fast and snappy. And while talking placements, we have a USB Type-C port to the left with the volume rockers and a small Lenovo logo. The bottom has the dual SIM tray, primary microphone and another Type-C port. The secondary mic is up top and to the right, we have the power key and pressure sensitive areas to the top and bottom. Kinda like ROG's air triggers. Now remember how I mentioned the camera on this phone, the selfie camera, it's a little unusual. Now that's because it's present under this power key. It is a pop-up camera that has the power key built on top. It's quite a, I mean, it's almost like the engineers were just going for bragging rights at this point. It is a little weird, you gotta give me that. Uh, but hey, that's what they've done and it is quite a mad design. Now, why would somebody put the selfie camera to the center? That's cause while the Legion Duel shares a lot in common with the Asus ROG Phone 3 or the ROG series, it does seem to have a soul of its own if I can say that. Lenovo is trying to make this as landscape friendly as possible. Right from the launcher allowing for a horizontal use that's landscape use, to that selfie camera, to charging, it's all handled from a you can do this in landscape perspective. Features like the ability to stream gameplay as well as your own footage are available thanks to this camera placement. 
talking about weird camera placements the rear cameras they are again centered they're right bang at the center uh, because that helps with the land I mean, not really. They've put it there because Lenovo split up the battery into two, or in other words, they're actually using two batteries on this phone. Why? Two is better than, okay, I'm not going there. There are two 2500 milliamp hour batteries totaling 5000 milliamp hour. It's lower than ROG 6000, but Lenovo's got an ace up its sleeve. Where something uh, like an ROG has a very respectable 30 watt charge speed, remember how we got two Type-C cables in the box? That is because you can plug both cables in at once and you get charge speeds up to 90 watts. So that is basically zero to 50 in 10 minutes, zero to 130 minutes. Insane, right? Now, if you're thinking, okay, does this mean I'm gonna have to pick up another charger? Apple cuts out chargers, maybe Lenovo cuts out the second charger. Nope. The included charger has two type three slots and the cables, one is longer than the other, and no, I'm not trying to be funny. I really am not. Uh, the longer cable is what you'd be expected to use for data transfer. Well, the shorter one is your second charge cable. Let's now circle back to the selfie camera. The selfies were respectable, portraits were decent too. Uh, but that's not what this, what's special with this 20 megapixel f2.2 camera. It's the software. It's all about the software. Like I mentioned, uh, you know, about streaming. Lenovo even lets you uh, cut your background out during the stream, um, add a few stickers and stuff. It's not perfect, but it works. Uh, while on the topic of software, this year is ZUI built on top of Android 10. Hearing the name ZUI brings back memories. Right from this ZUK ad, All the false updates promised for the ZUK Z2, uh, but then it is a different time and it's a different Lenovo now. now. The people who made and broke these promises, they're long gone, abandoned shit, joined the competition, God knows what. Now it's a different Lenovo, that's what I'm trying to say. And just like with the ROG Phone 3, we get an option to choose between a stockish uh, Android-esque theme and a more gamer-esque theme. Regardless of what you choose, there are a lot of features thrown in here by Lenovo. For starters, while there is no dedicated game mode key, instead pressing and holding the triggers, uh, the ultrasonic triggers, it launches you into a gaming specific mode, the Lenovo Legion mode. Here we get to see things like ping, the FPS, temperature, CPU and GPU clock speed. This is also where we can get to the stream mode from. Uh, the rampage button here, it kind of puts the phone into, well, let's just simply say it's the equivalent of the ROG phone's X mode. Given the Snapdragon 865 plus, plus chip inside, there's nothing to complain with performance. It's paired with 12 or 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, 256 or one, uh, 512 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. And then we have 4DU Touch. This is the gesture control. The additional option here is swapping below to switch between apps. It's quite intuitive. Talking about intuitive, Lenovo owns Motorola, right? So motor features like twist to turn on camera or swap, uh, swap between them, chop chop to turn on and off the flashlight, uh, they're all present and accounted for. The rear cameras, they again go toe to toe with the ROG on the spec front. A 64 megapixel primary paired with an f1.9 lens, the images are shot turned out quite good, not the best in class but definitely above average. The secondary is a 16 megapixel ultra wide which is serviceable, nothing too special. But this phone isn't about the cameras, it's about gaming. And for that, Lenovo's gone above and beyond. The streaming options, the solid flagship specs, stereo speakers, that 144Hz refresh AMOLED panel. We also get 240Hz touch sampling, dual vibration motors. They all enhance that gaming experience. Now, the best part is that the Legion Dual starts at 3500 yuan or about 38,000 Indian rupees. And even if Lenovo launched it in other markets with a 20, 30% markup, it would still be an amazing deal. But will Lenovo bring it to the likes of India? That is the big question, isn't it? Anyway guys, I felt this was a very interesting phone, so I decided I'm gonna actually do a video about it. Now, it's your turn to tell me what you feel about the Legion Duo. Uh, is this a phone that interests you? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know via the comments below. And also thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4ETech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.